My name is Casey Hayes, and I'm the Assistant Dean for our Graduate Business Programs here at the University of San Diego, and it is my pleasure and my job to get to work with all of our different graduate students uh, from the very first point of inquiry in the admissions process uh, through graduation and beyond. So I hope to be working with many of you starting next year. My only role this morning is to introduce the two awesome hosts that we have that are going to walk you through uh, this event and this day. We have two students, a first year full-time MBA student and a second year full-time MBA student who are going to act as your hosts this morning. So it is my pleasure to introduce to you Shannon Winchell, who is a first-year full-time MBA student. Shannon, before coming to USD, was working at Western Blended Products as the head of sales and an account manager. She holds a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science from the University of Michigan. Shannon uh, is a athlete and competed her first Ironman triathlon not too long ago. And this summer, at the conclusion of her first year of the full-time MBA, will be doing an internship at Vans in Orange County as an operations intern. So thank you, Shannon, for joining us this morning. Tim Mullen is a second-year full-time MBA student. And before coming to USD, he worked at Minjar Gold as a senior planning engineer in Australia. His undergrad degree is from the University of South Wales, a Bachelor of Engineering in Mining. He has the hobbies of traveling and playing music and listening to music, as well as sailing. And upon graduation this May, uh, Tim will be working as a sales business analyst at Symer here in San Diego. So without any further ado, I'm going to pass the mic to our two MCs for the day, and they will guide you through the rest of this experience. Welcome. Wow. I like getting an applause. Um, as, just to introduce ourselves a little more, as Casey mentioned, I'm a first year full-time MBA. Um, I really was looking to get my MBA because I wanted to do a career move. I came from a family-owned business. Western Blender Products has been in my family for about 80 years, but I kind of wanted to shift from we manufacture and distribute exterior building material, and I wanted to be in retail. So I needed an MBA. I chose to use an MBA as like a launching off point, which was incredibly successful for me. Yeah, and much like Shannon and myself, I also wanted to uh, pivot careers. I came from the desert out know, in Australia, in the outback, and uh, wanted a change of scenery and a change of industry and an MBA seemed like the right way to go and having kicked it off two years ago and, and now with a really lucrative job offer from a tech company here in San Diego, I think I can say it's been a fairly successful transition. Um, as Casey said, I was, I'm a bit of a travel junkie and being here at USD, I've been able to uh, further explore Mexico, Peru, Argentina, Brazil, Madrid and Lisbon. So um, if, if set it, jet setting and, and seeing more of the world is, uh, is up for you and with a business focus at, at the heart of that travel, then I would certainly encourage you to look into some of the options that USD can provide there. Uh, before we, uh, let, let's, let's kick things off officially and it gives me great pleasure to introduce the head of our school, Dr. Luigi. Um, before she worked with us here 2000, since 2009, um, she was a head analyst for um, Morgan Stanley and takes great pleasure in teaching us exactly how to get to the nuts and bolts of financial statements, um, both in first year and, and also I had the pleasure of taking her as an elective professor uh, in my second year. Um, and Dr. Luz is always in the conversation for Professor of the Year, even since 2009, and has taken out that honour a number of times. So without any further ado, we'll hand the mic over to, to her for a more formal address. to find my presentation <laughs> and I don't use Apple products. Close this out right there. Close that out. 
Just hit the red button. No. Um, and see, close. I can get out of Twitter. Okay. I don't use Apple either. You don't do Apple either. Okay. Um, Okay, give me the home page, please. Oh, look, there it is. There we go. It was not red. That was my problem. Hey. Thank you, thank you. Okay. All right. So as you can see, I am not a whiz with technology. <laughs> so good morning. And um, thank you for being here sharing your morning with us. I often, I've, I've been here 10 years, and I can't get over the fact that before I came here, I was working in Times Square. So when I walk around and look at the environment around me and the community, I feel so grateful and fortunate to be here. So what I'm gonna do today is share with you some information about the University of San Diego School of Business and who we are and what differentiates our MBA program from other programs. So first of all, I have an MBA. I finished it 25 years ago, and I'm going to my 25-year reunion in June. And I am the poster child for the MBA as a vehicle to make a monumental career change. So I went from being in marine geology to finance and accounting. And for me, my MBA was the, not only a big investment in my future, but the single most impactful investment that I have made. So not only did it allow me to do that big career change, but I also gained lifelong friends and a large network of professionals that is always there for me. Okay, now, I'm looking for page down, there we go. So who are we at the School of Business? So I'm sharing with you our mission. We develop socially responsible business leaders with a global mindset through academically rigorous, relevant, and values-based education and research. So what are these values that we hold? Well, first of all, we value integrity. We focus on ethics, ethical decision-making, ethical leadership, and corporate social responsibilities throughout our coursework and our other activities. We also maintain excellence with high standards of rigor for our faculty and students and coursework. And we are student-centric. Our motto is students first. So we are a small, private, Catholic university. What does that mean? We focus on teaching excellence. You have access to faculty. So before I worked on Wall Street, I was a tenured track faculty at UC Irvine. And I also was a student at Cornell for many years. Um, so I've done big private universities and big public universities. At those universities, I was either teaching or in large classes, sometimes with hundreds of people. And as a professor, I had no idea who the students were other than maybe three or four that were sitting in the front row or came to my office. Um, here, the maximum class size is capped at 40, and most of our classes are much smaller than that. So some classes, you may only have 10 people in them. And what that does, it, it allows you a very personalized experience in your MBA education. Um, and you will get to know your professor, professors whether you want to or not. So I'll give you both sides. All right, we also maintain high standards for professionalism. Why? Because in the business world, perceptions matter. How you present yourself, how you communicate, extremely important and is often the factor that will differentiate you from one of your peers who has the technical knowledge but not the soft skills to advance in his or her career. Finally, we value community. We are a family here at the University of San Diego. We support our students 
We all want to help our community, both locally, nationally, and globally. All of us would like to have a positive impact on our environment and the business world. All right, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of our centers that we have on campus. So the Center for Peace and Commerce is a partnership between the School of Business and the Croc School of Peace Studies. And their objective is to prepare students to be a new generations of change makers. So they encourage students to develop and exercise innovative approaches for making a positive impact on the four Ps. What are the four Ps? People, planet, profit, and peace. And they sponsor many activities uh, for it, that result in positive social impact. And the one that you may be familiar with, their biggest one, is the Social Innovation Challenge, uh, which is going on this spring right now. So the Social Innovation Challenge started, the first year was in 2011. It is a binational competition that, it's a pitch competition where students are sponsored, promoted, and supported to develop ideas that help society. And so far there have been 498 teams of students that have competed, and the winning teams have earned about $285,000. And each year, we have more teams and more support. Uh, the CPC also sponsors conferences, guest speakers. And as an MBA student, you're able to take courses in the School of Peace and have them count for your MBA, a limited number. Okay. Now, let's go back to the mission statement. So we've covered part of the socially responsible business leaders. Uh, we also focus on developing leaders with a global mindset. And the Aller Center has been around for 20 years, actually more than 20 years. It is an endowed center. And the Aller Center supports international experiences of all different kinds. So we teach many courses abroad, and I'll share some of those with you. There are other experiences abroad, which include consulting projects, exchanges with universities in other countries. Uh, we also send faculty abroad. So since being at USD, I have, in my capacity as a faculty member, I've been to Rio de Janeiro on the consulting practicum. And then I've also visited India, South Korea, Japan, Mexico, United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, and Italy, and Greece. So, oh, and Argentina, of course. Many countries. So we take international very seriously, and it is our strongest core strength. It differentiates us from just about all other universities. So more than 70% of our MBA students have participated in some sort of experience abroad, and the Aller Center also has partnerships with over 20 universities around the globe. They sponsor executives in residence and international research. So the Aller Center is a very valuable resource that we have on campus. And I encourage all of you to participate in it. And I think. If you talk to some of our current students, you will find that their international experiences are probably the most value add, most beneficial experience that they get during their MBA experience here. So um, I encourage you to participate in as many of these international experiences as you can, because there is no other way to get that sort of experience. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Now. What I have here is a slide that shows you where the Aller Center takes students oops, abroad. So the, the different colored dots show you where the exchange programs are, where the courses abroad are, and where our international consulting practicums have been held. So you can see that we have spanned quite a wide portion of the globe. And also, so you have an idea of more specifically 
the courses and offered by the Aller Center. On the next two slides, I have a list of courses offered in 2018. So in the, in the January intercession, MBA students have the opportunity to go to Brazil, China, Germany, Argentina, or England, and either do an international consulting project with a group of students working for one of the local companies in those countries, or they can actually take a course so international comparative management offered in Argentina. And by the way, uh, Jaime Alonso Gomez is our dean. It is very rare for a dean to actually teach classes. So he is also passionate about teaching. And he and Denise Diamond, who is the director of the Aller Center, the two of them co-teach the international comparative management course in Argentina. Uh, the other opportunity for study abroad during that intercession is Creative Thinking, Designing Sustainable Innovations by one of our outstanding junior faculty, Priya. And I'm not even going to try to pronounce her last name, because no one does. We just call her Priya. Uh, during the spring break, there's also opportunity to travel abroad. So the corporate governance course is offered in Japan. And in the summer, there are four different options for study abroad. So two in Europe, one in, and then another in Spain and Guatemala. Uh, and then in the fall semester, there is also a trip, a supply chain management trip that goes to Asia. So this is just a, an example to show you all the different options that we offer in one calendar year. OK, now back to the mission. Haven't talked about academics or curriculum yet. So we develop socially responsible business leaders with a global mindset through academically rigorous, relevant, and values-based education and research. So what am I going to talk about next? I'm going to talk about our very talented faculty. Our faculty have PhDs from top universities. So for example, Stanford, Wharton, Cornell, Duke, UCLA, Berkeley, and USC, to name a few. They publish research in top research journals, and they also publish applied research in more practitioner-oriented journals. They have work experience, and they have connections to industry. They can help mentor you and develop career opportunities. And most importantly, our faculty are passionate about teaching, working with students, and scholarship. So a very important differentiating factor, besides having small classes, is that our faculty are accessible. We love working with students. Now, why am I saying this? I was in the UC system as a faculty member for six years. We wanted to get in and out of that classroom as fast as possible so that we could focus all of our energy on our research. That is not the emphasis here. Our faculty is passionate about teaching and working with students. Uh, we hold regular office hours, and we also welcome interactions with students outside of those office hours. And you will see us at many of the events and activities sponsored on campus. So how many of you attended the open house a couple of weeks ago. So if you recall, there were about 10 of our faculty members at that open house. That is extremely unusual to have so many faculty at an open house, including our dean and our former dean. So again, our faculty love working with students and love teaching. Now, uh, let's get down to the nuts and bolts. I wanted to share some information with you about our MBA curriculum. So the MBA curriculum just under, has just undergone a change. So we will implement a new curriculum in the fall of 2017. And all of our full-time and professional MBA students will have the same required courses. And why did we do this? We wanted our curriculum to be more relevant. So we updated it. And this is based on feedback from industry and feedback from students. We also embedded more international content throughout the courses. 
And our new curriculum has fewer required courses, which therefore gives you more flexibility and choice. You have the ability to take more electives. It also eliminated the two tracks in the full-time MBA program. So prior to this change, we had a global management track and an international business track. Starting in the fall of 2017, we no longer have tracks. Instead of the international business track, we have an international business concentration. And the beauty of this is that instead of forcing you to make a decision whether you want to do the global management track or international track before you start the program, you can actually decide that you want to do the international concentration after you're here. Okay. So this, again, more flexibility is a good thing. Our MBA program has 56 units of credit required. 34 of those units are required courses. The remaining 22 are electives. And for the PMBAs, uh, there are 53 total units because the PMBAs are not required to do the consulting or practicum. OK, now, a little bit more information. Our required courses are in four areas. Responsible leadership development, business core functions, corporate, corporate social responsibility, sus sustainability and ethics, and integrative problem solving. And we also offer seven optional concentrations. So if, you pref if rather than be a generalist, you prefer to take a deep dive and learn deep knowledge about a specific area, if you complete an additional 12 units in one of these seven areas, you have a concentration in that area. Additionally, we offer dual degree programs with the Master of Science in Finance and Master of Science in Real Estate. OK. Now, some additional requirements for completing your degree. If you're a full-time student, there is a required international experience. And you are required to complete our career and professional development course. Now, why the career and professional development course? Because this course is specifically designed to help you succeed in your job search and advance in your career. So again, we sponsor workshops that will help you write your resume, that will help you learn how to market yourself to employers, that you will be given workshops in negotiation skills, very, very practical experience, and also work on communication skills. So um, I'll tell you a little story about when I worked at Morgan Stanley. I was surrounded by extremely intelligent, hardworking people. It was never the smartest person in the room who advanced and got promoted. It was the person who had the best communication skills, the one who, who could present his or her ideas and persuade others to believe them. So again, communication is extremely important. Finally, the other two required items are community service, consistent with our mission here and leadership labs, which again, help develop those highly coveted soft skills. So time after time, I hear from employers that, and I mentioned this earlier, the differentiating factor between student A and student B, one who gets the job or gets promoted, is that one who gets promoted or gets the job has the soft skills. So is professional, communicates effectively, is punctual, etc. Now, a little bit more detail about the curriculum. So what I've got here is the required courses in each of the four areas, so the first two areas on this slide. And I just wanted to highlight what's different from our old curriculum in the new curriculum. So first of all, all of our MBA students will be required to take uh, the Leading Multicultural Teams and Organizations course. So this course is a combination of leadership, organizational behavior, and working in international teams. It's very practical. And the business core function covers the core areas of marketing, financial accounting, finance, supply chain management, and economics. And the economics course is a combination of macroeconomics, microeconomics, and international economics. 
Now, our CSR, sustainability and ethics, the only change here is that our sustainable business model innovation and design course is bigger. So the feedback from the students was that we really need this course to be longer. So instead of being a one unit course, which is what it was in the past, it will be a two unit course. So finally, on the integrative problem solving, the major change here is that in the past, when we had two different tracks, the students in the international business track were not required to take our statistical decision making course. Instead, they completed an online module in statistics as pre-work before the fall semester. And the feedback from the students was that online coursework was not sufficient preparation for them to succeed in our finance courses uh, and data analytics, marketing, and other courses that require the statistics. So we are providing a more rigorous set of core requirements. And finally, uh, you can complete the international consulting project or <coughs> business consulting locally. Okay, now, I'm sure the, qu the question on everybody's mind is jobs and career services. So last year at this event, the attendees asked, the questions were specifically focused on career services. So this year, I'm here to give you some information about career services, and we actually have our senior director of career services, James Silcox, to provide more detailed information uh, should there be more questions. So our career services office has doubled in size in the last year, and they are here to help the students prepare for career advancement and their job search and connect students with opportunities. And what are some examples of services that they provide? There's an MBA mentors program. I've mentioned a few of the workshops that they do. There are many, many workshops. And they also sponsor career treks. In the fall, we did a finance career trek to Orange County and visited two banks and an investment bank. We also did a career trek to San Francisco. And then there have been two career treks locally in the spring, uh, one focused on tech, the other one on biotech. We, they also sponsor panels and roundtables, and of course, many networking events. And I already mentioned the career and professional development course, and there's also an internship course. So on this next slide, I just have the schedule of events and activities sponsored by our career services office for you to see, albeit you may not be able to read it, but the bottom line is there's a lot going on. And you do get personalized attention because we are small. Okay. And the burning question, who hires our students? So what I have here is a list of companies that have hired graduates in 2015, 2016, and 2017. And what you'll notice is there is a mix of companies. There are some big companies that everybody's heard of. Amazon, Bank of America, Deloitte, Ernst & Young, KPMG, McKinsey, Merrill Lynch, Northrop Grumman, Petco, Qualcomm, Walmart. And there's also small and medium companies. So there's a little bit there for everybody and People have different preferences with regard to the type of company they want to work at. Uh, we cover it all. Okay, now, in closing, I also wanted to share with you two more resources that will help you with your career development and connecting with industry. We have two more centers on campus. One of them is the Burnham Moore Center for Real Estate, and the other one is the Supply Chain Management Institute. And both of them sponsor conferences, networking opportunities, training, and connect students with the industry and industry professionals. So now I'm ready to start my 45-minute lecture in financial accounting. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Having said that, it is my cue to depart and wish you well.
Thank you. Thanks very much, Dr. Luigi. I can personally speak to the faculty's availability. I can't tell you how many Thursday afternoons I spent in the room outside Dr. Luigi's office trying to dig through financial statements with her last semester. So let's kick it off with the speaker. Do, do you want to run through the agenda briefly? Sure. So we've gone through the introductions. Next, we're going to do an hour of our student panel, where since we're a pretty small group, it can be pretty interactive. And then we're going to break for um, a sample class. And the two um, sample classes we have, one is with Dr. Simon Kroom, and it is what role does personality and personality disorder play in executive success? And the other sample class is with Dr. Priya, and it will be new product development. Those will be upstairs, so you can follow one of either Tim or I or any of the student panels who will be attending. And they're both great classes with great professors who have been here for a while. We're also going to have the live Twitter feed up just in case people tweet in questions and we'll answer them live. This is being recorded for those streaming um, globally. Hello out there to YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> so why don't we have our panel start and introduce themselves? Do we want to start with Jen? I think we yeah. just need to test the mics first. Can we just quickly test the mics to make sure they're all... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, just talk to yeah. One, two. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Hello. It works. You there, Chris? Chill. I think they'll hear us. Yeah. Yeah. The mic? <laughs> yeah, you guys have to share mic. Or speak loudly. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so this is going to be pretty interactive. We're just going to uh, kick off with a bit of an introduction about ourselves um, and then open the floor up to you guys as well as Twitter. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to tweet them through. James from Career Services is going to be running around the room with a microphone. Um, if you could wait until the microphone gets to you before asking a question you might have, um, just for the beauty of the feed, that would be great. Uh, do you want to start? Yeah, sure. Um, again, my name is Shannon, full-time MBA. Um, I don't actually have a concentration just because I didn't think it was a competitive advantage for me. I choose classes that I think are most interesting. Um, recently, I did a practicum in Shanghai with Nike Greater China, which was a great experience. I then traveled to Mumbai, India with Jen um, and had a class in innovation in emerging markets with Dr. Priya, who you guys can have a sample class with today. I also just got back from Peru with Kim. <laughs> Where we, oh, and Robin, sorry, where we did um, doing business, oh, and Tim, most of us were there. I don't totally remember Tim being there, I'm just kidding. Um, where we did doing business in Latin America, so like Tim, I came and really wanted to really bank on the international experience that USD offers, and I am not going to be slowing down with my international experience. I'm actually going to travel to Lisbon and Madrid right before I start my internship at Vans. Uh, yeah, Tim Mullen, the courses I chose, I really wanted to focus on the soft skills, so I picked lots of courses around innovation, negotiation, politics, um, and I found them really, really helpful uh, for, the, for the first sort of glimpse I've had of, of the wider business world. Uh, what drew me to USD in the first place? I guess it was the small class sizes more than anything. I came from a very small school for mining engineering at the University of New South Wales, in Australia and uh, I really valued being able to knock on a professor's door beer in hand and, and ask whether or not that happens in Australia not so much here on the drug campus but ask uh, ask them anything really whether it was academic related or, or career related or, or just p personal um, insights that I needed uh, and I found the exact same open door policy albeit minus the alcohol here at USD um, as I said Dr. Luigi was available almost every week because that's how much help I needed to get through financial <laughs> statements. But uh, thankfully, um, I don't think I could ever um, possibly hope to understand a financial statement as well as I do now, having taken um, her course and taken, av taken advantage of, of the added availability that we get to our faculty. And being such a small class size, is that the course can be very agile. They respond to student needs very, very quickly. As you can see, not, uh, a lot of the information you have about the two tracks has, has already 
um, been superseded by, by a recent change to the course structure, um, which just shows how, how student focused, I guess, the school can be. Um, do you want to move on, Joe, and tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. Or this? Yeah. All right. So my name is Joe Thor, and I'm a, um, the first, taking my first year as a professional um, MBA. I currently work at Northrop Grumman, um, and uh, I've you know, love the program so far. I just finished my, or I'm about to finish my first semester. We still have an individual project we have to do for one of the classes. Um, but, um, so like I said, I, I started this January. Um, there's about 17 um, students in my cohort. I'm all working full time. Um, and they, I've heard nothing but rave reviews from, from them as well. Um, and part of the reason I chose MBA the professional MBA at USD was because of the fl flexibility. I uh, live in San Marcos, so it's hard for me to come down, you know, two or three times a week, depending on the class. Um, so I, I found this program and, you know, went to a couple of these uh, sessions and, and found that it really fit what I was looking for. And so far, it's been a great experience for me. All right. Hi, I'm Kim Battle. So I'm also a first year professional MBA. I started in the fall. Um, I chose MBA a lot because of the customization and the small class sizes. Um, also, my mom taught here for a long time, so it was an easy <coughs> move. Um, I work in Carlsbad in the sporting goods hub, and so I take the coaster down here. But I think the the game changer in the program for me here was going abroad to Peru. So what's really nice is you have your core classes with your cohort and everyone becomes so tight. You have, su you have such a great support system. But then as you continue through the program, you have classes with full-time MBA students and other professionals from the hybrid program. And the value that those different sets of students bring is really unique. You have a unique classroom with I mean, people from Australia and all over the rest of the world. So it's been a great experience so far. I'm Robin Gustafson. Um, my, before coming here, my background was mostly in nonprofits, and I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do when I actually chose this program. Um, so it was, for me, a time when I was really figuring out what's important to me, where do I want to go, and this program just fit perfectly. I really wanted an international focus, and we have so many international experiences, which we've all taken full advantage of. It's been amazing. Um, and since coming here, my opportunities have completely opened up. I um, had an internship at Petco here last semester, so I'm a full-time MBA student graduating now. Um, I just accepted a full-time offer there as well, and I'm going into e-commerce, which is exactly what I wanted and never knew until last semester. So I'm very happy to be here and share some of that. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ike, and um, I come from an ac uh, accounting background. I'm a second year MBA MSF student, as you can see there. And the MSF is a master's in finance, so it's a dual degree program. Um, and I came from an accounting background, so I've always been on the technical side. And I decided I wanted to come to USD for my MBA to sort of take advantage of the small class sizes as well as the flexibility within a program and the ability to pretty much do whatever you want. Um, I've been working throughout the program um, professionally, so the ability to have the flexibility of having classes at night, even though you're in a full program, and um, if you guys choose to do the, M the MSF, having classes on the weekends, really allows for you to, to expand your horizons during weekdays and during normal working hours. And I still was, like everyone else, able to take advantage of studying abroad. I went to Japan last uh, year, actually around this time, and it was fantastic, great experience. So, like I said before, if you are willing to sort of push yourselves and take advantage of the flexibility and the opportunity here, it's definitely a good school to go to. Hi, I'm Jennifer Syed. I'm the first year full-time MBA. I've been born and brought up in India, so actually this is my international experience, <laughs> coming from <laughs> India to San Diego. So I think uh, I've, my background has been in technology. I was in technology consulting company uh, for close to three years. And then I was like, I need to get out of that bubble of technology and see the world outside, literally outside. <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, and I chose uh, USD because I remember going through the internet and I was like, it spoke a lot about women entrepreneurship, which caught my mind. I was, um, you will see a lot of women 
uh, professors, administrators, everyone is like, there's so many women around. And that really just motivates me. And um, the classes have been a big reason. The faculty have been amazing. And the opportunities, I got a chance to go back to India with uh, people from different nationalities. Meeting, I think in our class, we have close to 10 nationalities, which is amazing. And I just like see people from Russia, from China, from the US, uh, from everywhere all around the world. And I think that's my experience. The whole cultural difference absorbing it has been my experience. So yes, come to USD. <laughs> <laughs> With that, we can open it up to the yeah. floor. If anyone's got any questions they're wanting to ask us, happy to answer. Got one there, Jim. Good morning. I'll, I'll get us started uh, with the first question. And my first question is for Kim. Uh, Kim, I work full time and I'm, uh, I just got accepted to the professional MBA program. And I'm really interested in studying abroad since I didn't get that opportunity in my undergrad studies. What advice would you provide for somebody that is in the professional pro uh, MBA program uh, to be successful in, in accomplishing studying abroad? Uh, PTO. <laughs> would be would be first and most important. I mean, honestly, when you're going into the program and you're working full time, it's really important to have not only the support, well, you have the support of the faculty here, but you really want to have the support of your employer as well. So before every semester, I sit down with my supervisor, anyone else that I work with, I let them know my schedule. And the study abroad schedules are available to you pretty far in advance. So you're able to plan out setting aside meetings, PTO, whatever it is you need. But really, the support of your employer is, is key to being able to do those. But I highly recommend it. And it's, it's valuable to your employer as well that you go abroad and get those experiences. Also, the Iowa Center, which is set up here, um, has fantastic opportunities in terms of scholarship um, for a little bit of extra work you can uh, help fund your trip and the courses themselves are a reduced tuition fee because they expect you to shoulder the cost of the travel yourself which means that you're also <laughs> free to tack on trips to wherever you want to go before or after if you can secure the time off so by planning your own actual movements and having to fund that yourself, you're left with added agility, I guess, to, to turn that into something a little more valuable for yourself. As well as, like I said, Arla Centre is really generous when it comes to um, providing students with additional financial support for those actual opportunities in exchange for um, small amounts of work like social media posting while we're there or um, coming up with some marketing material for them before we go and, and things like that. Um, so that's another added help, I guess, to, to help um, enact those opportunities. Yeah, to, and to speak on that a little bit, um, for my trip to Tokyo, I, I wrote a song as a scholarship, so you can make it fun. It doesn't have to be like an essay that you write about why you want to go, wherever you're going to go. It can be a fun, cool project. And I got a scholarship that paid for my flight as well as extra money for Tokyo, so yeah. it's really cool. I will add too that the scheduling of the trips is really convenient if you work full time. Like I work full time and we just got back from Peru. So it was over spring break, which worked perfectly for school. Um, and then they plan it so that it doesn't cross over into multiple work weeks. It's usually only like four days out of a work week for the uh, spring break one. And then we actually had the optional day to go to Machu Picchu on the fifth day. So I ended up just taking five days off of work um, and had the two on each, you know, the weekend and we went to Machu Picchu. I went yeah. a great class experience. So I really mess, missed minimal work for a truly life-changing experience. Any other questions in the audience? Hi, good morning. I also work full-time, and I would like to know a little bit more how it works like on the Saturday, Sunday classes, or evening classes. Can you provide a little bit more information how the program, and that's to any, any of the full-time employees. Um, I can speak on that. Well, specifically for the MSF, all the classes are, are on Fridays and Saturdays, except for the finals, which are on during the weekdays um, in the middle of the day. And it works out perfectly for me because I work full time as well currently. And I'm able to just work on from Monday through Thursday, go to class all day Friday and all day Saturday, which is why I have this massive coffee right now because I have to go to class after this. And um, I mean, if you're up for it, if you're willing to work that into your schedule for 
uh, temporary, just a year, it's, it can be really fruitful for you. And I'm in the professional MBA, um, and how our first semester worked is that we had classes all day Saturday, all day Sunday, once per month. Um, it happened to be the last week of each month. Um, and so you could work your full Monday through Friday schedule at work, and then just um, you know grind it hard on Saturday and Sunday. Um, but it, it worked out. Um, we had a lot of group projects, but we would meet during the week, or we'd Skype online. Um, it it was a it was a good. I liked it because I didn't have to drive from you know North County every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, so and then you also have the choice to um, be flexible with your schedule, um, like some of the other um, panelists said. So it, it's a great opportunity. You want to add something? Sure, I'll add something. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, I do make the drive from Carlsbad down here, um, but with the availability of classes, you can, after you get your core classes completed, you can really build your schedule the way you see fit. Some classes start at 5.30, some don't start till seven. So for me, I like starting at 5.30 because I go into work super early in the morning and I leave at four to sit on the five on the way down. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I mean, really, before you start the program, you just have to, you lay out your schedule, you figure out what's gonna work for you, when are your best study hours, understand that you're gonna be grinding, and ultimately, you're getting your MBA because you want to, so just the want to be there gives you the energy that you need. The classes are so involved because it's a small classroom, it's a lot of back and forth, it's not just professors reading off slides to you, so. Really, it's it's been fine. It seems a little intimidating, but it's fine. And, and one more thing to note is that the professors know that you're that everyone in the in the class is working full time. So you know they'll be a little more lenient if you know maybe something was due on a Tuesday. You know, like you had some work or you're traveling for work. They're gonna they're gonna understand. Um, and you know everyone's case is different, so they're very they're very understanding of that that you're working full time. Hi, for those of you in the part-time program, do you or any of your cohorts have families with children trying to manage the, the school, the family, the life all, all together? Can you talk a little bit about either your experience or those in your, in your cohort? Yeah, of course. So um, one of my classmates actually just had a baby um, just a few months ago. We have a couple students. Um, I got engaged in the fall. Um, they have families. Again, it's just you lay out your schedule, you figure out what's gonna work best for you, but it's absolutely doable. And because our group is so small, everyone knows each other really well, and we can work with each other's schedules to get products done. Now with things like Skype and Google Docs available, it's really easy to get group work done together without having to necessarily meet on campus. But yes, we do have students that have families. I'd say 60% of our deliverables in incorporate some sort of collaboration or group work and it, it's it certainly hasn't been an impediment to any of us <coughs> even as freewheeling internationals with no real commitments here we still have to work in with mm -hmm. the schedules of our american family oriented um classmates and it hasn't really been a, a stumbling block for any of us Everyone's fairly flexible and, and we all understand that there are different priorities. There are some people who have to dedicate a hell of a lot of time to, to job search and career services certainly does their best to help us out there. But that's added time that potentially professional MBAs don't really need to spend. And so that frees up a, a little bit of their schedule and you can usually find a way to make it work. Everyone's pretty understanding of each other's situations. Hi. For um, Jennifer and Shannon, who are in the full-time program, what does your typical week look like? Um, we're actually in two different cohorts, which won't be the case next year, but mine, now, now mine's pretty free and open. <laughs> but last semester, it was 
we had class two classes during the day in this semester we've shifted because those were our core classes and now i get to take my electives so i've shifted into night classes with the professional mbas and um more part-time mbas so it's you know it's it was busy because we were taking 17 credits but it's not like i wouldn't say you have a full-time job with it but it you were in class your first semester during the day and now i have my days open so if i wanted to work be, me being a domestic student, I definitely could, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's like in the fall, you have classes from morning to evening, so it goes like from nine to four. So it's more like a school uh, timetable. But I think in spring, like we have classes in the afternoon and the night because we have electives that run from evening, like Kim yeah. said, from 5.30 on. So school-wise, I mean, the academic portion of it, it's it's heavy, but it's like, it's completely up to how many credits you take. It, like, I prefer taking, onloading my credits and finishing it off in the first year, but you have the option of like spreading it evenly across two years. Um, also, it depends on the other activities that you involve yourself in. Like, you can do case competitions. If you're involved in clubs, you're busier. The more the work you take up, mm -hmm. the more busier you get. So if you're just going to study, probably you might be freer. And also, yeah, the whole job search thing, I think in spring you're so involved in finding an internship, that takes up a lot of your time. So I would say my day goes on like really busy. Yeah. Uh, this um, After getting an internship, yeah, it's been yeah, much it's been more nice. lighter <laughs> once you get an internship. But I think till you get an internship with the studies and especially if you're doing case competitions and you're a part of, we are, we are like a part of quite a few clubs. So you have events for that, you attend, attend networking events, um, so I think your day just is more of, I think most of our time goes in building the network. So if you take that as a job, yes, my day is yeah. throughout the day. And like, I can sit here and joke with you that I'm not working, but it's along with Jen, yeah. I'm actually working the whole day. It's just yeah. not attending class, which was really nice that the first semester we onloaded most of our credits. So this semester it's, yeah. I'm involved in two global case competitions. I'm on a boards with Jen that yeah. it's instead of classes, you're in meetings, building your network. Yeah, absolutely. I, I did the full-time program uh, and, and I'm just about to finish it so I can speak as to the full two years. And it is quite a transition from the first year to the second year. You definitely notice a change in, in scheduling. Um, but in that first year, as, as an international student, I'm not allowed to work. So I'm using, taking advantage of every opportunity I've got to, to build that network. There's lots of, uh, e it's good that your evenings are free because you can get out there and enjoy, you're in California, enjoy California and um, get to know the, the San Diego business community really well. There's lots of connections to um, adult networking, uh, or professional networking um, groups uh, here in San Diego and, and also further up the California coast. Um, so you're kind of thankful that you get your evenings free for that opportunity and, and that's how you kind of walk your way into, a, into an internship as well, um, which, which paves the way for, for a new career if that's the way you're looking to go. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a day intense for the uh, schedule for the first year and then in the second year, typically you've worked your way into some sort of part-time employment and then you can take advantage of both part-time employment during the day and, um, and evening classes with, with the rest of the professional groups um, and, and the rest of the cohorts. Personally, I work for, uh, for Syma with, with Myra um, and uh, that's a tech company based up in Rancho Bernardo and, and that came as a direct result of an internship which I got as a direct result of working with our career office at one of the career fairs here, here and then back channeling and networking my ass off to get in through the door um, of an evening when when class permitted me to. So it, it's kind of set up really, really well if you're looking to transition careers because the scheduling is really accommodating for, for that um, particular goal, I guess. Do we have any more questions? Heaps. Great. <laughs> <coughs> Good morning. Um, Dr. Luigi touched upon the community service requirement as part of the kind of core curriculum. 
How is that woven in, especially as a part-time student, and kind of what are the opportunities? How is that fulfilled as part of the curriculum? Yeah, so um, they do a great job of giving you opportunities that you can, if, if you're not willing to go find an opportunity that makes sense for you for community service, um, we get weekly emails about, hey, they're looking for help at this company, with this nonprofit. So it is easy if you're really busy and don't have time to go look for one. Um, we do provide that here. Um, for me, I'm really passionate about kids' music. And so my first year, um, they connected me with someone here in the community who runs a program for kids in music. It's, uh, I think, like a 20-hour requirement. But I ended up doing, I think, 30 hours because it was so fun and great. It's, and you can space it out however you want. You can do it on the weekends. It's really manageable to get through. It does have to be business-oriented, though. There has yeah. to be some aspect yeah. of a yeah. business focus within it. It's like a bolt-on project that you can do any time over the two years you want. That's for this yeah. particular community service um, requirement. On top of that, you've got three classes in uh, corporate social responsibility, which really put you in depth into... So I did uh, Global Entrepreneurship, which was a course we took in Argentina, which uh, took us through how you start a startup that isn't profit-based or, or has a dual goal in mind, both profit and, and helping out society. Um, and that was a five-day course where we had to come up with a new project that would help the Argentinian community while we were based in Argentina. So there's, there's coursework that constantly has that same message through it of community service and corporate social responsibility, as well as added projects on top of that. Um, and one of your electives, is that still the case? Does one of your electives still have to be corporate social responsibility focused as well. So it, it, it's, it's built into the curriculum and, yeah. and there's plenty of other op opportunities with the Center of Peace and Justice here at the, the Croc Institute. Um, there's, they've got great reach into the community here to, to help you um, become a change maker, whether that's your focus or not. You kind of end up being one regardless. <laughs> yeah, just to go off of that, I am going to be doing my community service with, um, it's actually a global organization that's focused here in San Diego that deals with human trafficking. And I like I stumbled into this organization through doing um, the Oxford Global Challenge case competition. Someone, one of my teachers put me into contact with the director and it's we built a connection through there. So I was a little concerned about that having, because it has to be within the community, but it's been a pretty seamless transition to find those connections and to be able to work with these really reputable organizations that you're actually changing. You're literally changing the world, or at least someone's world, which is pretty cool. Thank you. There's a few more in that same area, I think. Hi, good morning. Um, it sounds like this, the schedule is actually fairly, really, really flexible. Um, I also work um, full time. Um, is there usually is there a possibility for starting as like a professional um, MBA and then if you wanted to ramp up your um, your courses, um, maybe doing nights and weekends, or is, would you recommend that as far as um, doing that to maybe accelerate when you would be completing your MBA? So certain classes are available on the weekends. So um, his program, the hybrid, yours are more weekends and online and then mine are more in the evening. But now that I've gotten through the first year with some of the core, there's one class I'm taking in the fall that's on four Saturdays for five hours, and then the rest of it's online work. So it just depends on the course offering that's available. But yes, it's an opportunity. Hi, can you talk a bit more about the Leadership Lab? Okay, so, <laughs> go ahead. No, please. Okay, um, so uh, one section of the leadership lab was uh, when we have a required course in leadership that we take in the first semester, and we have leadership fellows come into our class, and uh, it's basically second years uh, kind of mentoring the first years, and uh, also what they ingrain into you at that point of time is more of there are people who have the quality but they don't have it really out there. I think it's bringing out that quality is what, you know, and especially when you have like second years, it's more like role modeling, kind of you see them, you know, people who are probably way more reserved opening up or really finding that quality within themselves. I think uh, for me, that was a good experience, having to see 
that happening to someone and I, I felt that was helpful. It also is at the very beginning of your time here. So yeah. I was in the international track and um, we went down to Mexico and it's a great icebreaker because mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to be in class with the same people for two years and everyone is being polite. But once you really get into the nitty gritty, you become instant friends very fast. It's just and it's a productive thing to do, yeah. especially because these are the people you are going to be learning and developing with. Yeah, I can I can speak personally. I um I was invited to become a leadership fellow this semester. So, um, the requirement is that you take an additional course in leadership, and that's almost like Robin like a weekly counselling session where you go through um, some immersive exercises in um, in feedback delivery, in self awareness, in um, assertiveness. And then you kind of coach each other through it, and it's a fairly emotional roller coaster, but it, it's fantastic, and it prepares you to then uh, reach out and help the first years as they start to form teams, understand that there's various uh, dynamics, both pers in personality and in uh, professional ways of operating, and then um, you you sort of take three or four contact opportunities to help the groups in, uh, as they're starting to form, understand what, what's at play at an emotional and a, and a psychological level because the school has prepared you really well to do that. And that program actually continues for those that stay in San Diego beyond the end of your MBA. So you can be a leadership fellow. There are some that have been doing it for three and four years now. And they take that opportunity to take time out of their work day to come back to campus and really help some of those new uh, MBAs and just mentor them through the, I guess, that, that managerial leadership um, challenge or, or, or slope to climb um, that the, the school really tries to, to bring in out of you as, as you embark on your journey. I don't know if you want to say a little bit more on the um. leadership classes, Robin, but... Yeah, I had my leadership class with uh, Dr. Mueller. So, and it was a great class because um, if you take, you will have to take her class once you enroll in because it's a required. And she focuses a lot on uh, creative uh, leadership. And I think, I I, I, for me, the term sounds very vague before I took the class, but I understood so much more about it and how cultures play. And going off what Tim said about the teams, uh, when you're in your fall semester, you're put into a learning team. So basically, you're set to work with four people. And you're working through the semester with those four people. And it's, it's tough because though I worked previously, you're so used to working with some set of cultures. Like I work primarily with Indians. So really having people from different countries on your team and really understanding what, how different it is, I think that has changed me a lot personally. And coming to the next semester, you're working in different teams. Like in spring, I've worked with literally, I think, five teams, different teams, where you have professional MBAs, you have people who have, who have 10 years of work experience, 15 years of work experience, and some who have like two years of work experience. And just like, I think that leadership class helped know myself more so that I can adjust myself in those teams. So I think that's my takeaway from that class, yeah. And as someone who is a domestic student, I would say that I think our international mix has really prepared me um, to be a global leader. Well, I don't know if I'll be a leader, but to work globally for sure. Um, our, class, our cohort, which was previously the international cohort, had 22 students, 19 of which were international. Um, so you really learn how to manage different cultures, how to work well, how to give and take. And that's something that's really helped me in my professional life. Um, and just the, developing those soft skills, like Tim said. Yeah. Um, it, it's an experience that I'm not sure how international other schools are, but I can't imagine that they could possibly offer like the range of cultural diversity that we have here. It's incredible. On yeah. top of that, the school takes leadership very seriously, um, especially with, uh, so there's a concentration in managerial leadership where, where you can take a lot of classes related to that. So I've, I've got that personal concentration. So like I said, it's, it's negotiation, it's entrepreneurship, it's strategic thinking, innovation, all rolled into one, as well as how to become a good leader through um, more psychology-based courses.
But on top of that, um, there's a, another program for executives, the MSEL, and there's some phenomenal um, insights to be gained by crossing paths with, with executives that are you know, 10, 20 years into the program. Um, and I, I've personally sat in on the CFO talk from Enron, yep. the CEO talk from WD40. We had a CEO from, uh, what was the, there was one, uh, another giant collapse there who actually uh, just narrowly avoided jail. Um, uh, we had the CEO of Love's Travel Stop here yesterday he, yeah, that we got to meet. So there, there's lots of opportunity to learn from, um, from executive level, uh, even at your MBA um, course. So that, that's been awesome. Any more? And while I still have the mic, um, <laughs> can I also ask just lo about logistically, uh, about how many hours per week for, I guess, the professional evening courses uh, between class, homework, everything else, like any kind of range of hours that you spend? Hmm. Pretty much 5.30 to 10 p.m. most nights. And then for me, I study during lunch at work. I lock myself in a conference room. And um, on the weekends a little bit too, so I don't know what that totals up to, but um, pretty much I count my evenings till about 10 p.m. Um. I think it also depends on the week. So for me, I go to class once per month, and then we have online classes in between. Um, but so you have pretty much a whole month before you're meeting with um, in a classroom setting. Um, so I think for me, I would um, spend a lot of time in the beginning getting a lot of the stuff done in between um, the, the classes, and then also spend a lot more time kind of as we get near uh, actual class time. And, and for my um, for my job, I, I work a 980 schedule, so I get every other Friday off. So I'm pretty much ded dedicating that every other Friday off the whole day to um, classwork and studying, um, as well as evenings. So it's, it's a good amount of work. Um, earlier you were talking about which answered quite a few of my questions, I guess, on um, social responsibility. But can any of you touch on also environmental responsibility and sustainability? Have you had any experience with that or classmates that do? That, for me, that's something that's really important. Yeah, um, Kim and I actually just got out of a class that was based entirely on the sustainability of a supply chain. And my project was specifically on the environmental sustainability of the USD's food supply chain, which also was Kim's, but mine was for fish. So our CSR, it's not just covering the social responsibility. It's They're talking about the entire environmental, social, um, economic. So yeah. Yeah, my portion of it was focused on how to educate people on sustainability. Specifically, we focused on undergrads. And what was really interesting about the class, we had Dr. Kroom, is he one of the yeah. Yeah. professors today? Yeah, so Dr. Kroom was our professor. And the project that we ended up doing in class was so impactful for every group that now we're, we're done with the course, but next Monday we're all presenting again at a supply chain conference on our findings. So everyone was really involved um, most of us didn't know too much about it at the beginning of the course, and it was that was a game changer course for sure. It, it's woven into some of the other coursework as well. Um, sustainability is is that full four P um, focus, and so even when we did our general supply chain, there was a really good unit on Taylor guitars and the work that they do to um, to look at at uh, wood sustainability around the planet. Um, and yeah, on top of that, um, your those those other other courses that I was talking about, sustainable business model design. If you've got a specific interest in uh, in environmental sustainability, that's encouraged. So we did um, food. We we looked at meal delivery services for that project. We looked at meal delivery services and what we could do to reduce wastage from a from a perspective um, of, of a consumer recycling initiative. So 
that it, it's really left up to you with a lot of your coursework to go out there and source your own projects for what actually interests you. I went out during the supply chain course and sourced a project with WD-40, for instance, um, which we only got through utilising the network of um, contacts that the university allows you to make. So it, it is really self-directed in terms of um, if you've got specific interest areas, you're encouraged to explore those. Yeah, it's self-directed, but also with this class, being that it's such a small school and a small program, our teacher contacted the head of all food services at USD, so we're working with with directly USD, and they were open to act literally changing the way that they source things to become more environmentally friendly, because as a school, that's what we're looking towards. And we're working with food services, but also taking undergrad teachers who focus in biological sciences. So you're taking all of these different inputs to try and make us more a more sustainable school. And also, we are a smoke-free campus. So that adds. I think the school starts like it starts right from the outside. So when you walk into the school itself, you see this huge board of it's a smoke-free campus. I think that's what it believes in. And the coursework is designed like that. We are taking a class on sustainable business model design right now. It happens on Fridays. And the whole, the cases that uh, Dr. Roche takes up over there is basically, we, we had a case that actually targeted environment sustainability. So it's more about learning about it and the different techniques that different companies around the world are employing. So I think you learn a lot from the classes. So tomorrow when you actually join a company, how you can transfer th that knowledge over there. Yeah, and I guess like studies are now showing that CSR is gonna be a huge part in successful businesses in the future. And I think USD is really capitalizing on our CSR program. And we're gonna be really ahead of the curve when other MBA programs are starting to adopt that into their curriculum. USD as a whole has, has a huge change making focus. And there's plenty of opportunity to get involved with new ideas and, and trying to make an impact really well encouraged. The MBA is certainly not isolated from that from that uh, general theme. Um, I have a question for the international students. Uh, how does it, because you said you can work the first year, uh, how does the internship or work uh, opportunities we have or how does it work? So, uh, so the first year you can't work on your if you're an, on an F1 visa. Um, once you complete your first year, you can do your internship under the CPT. That is, uh, you work for three months. That is close to three months your CPT time. So through your uh, two years, you can utilize your CPT and uh, work part time and on an internship basis. And once you complete two years of your MBA program, you can use your OPT. That's for one year, either working or looking for a job. So um, those are your international options. It is, I wouldn't say the first year not working is a disadvantage. For me, it was more like to work here, you need to kind of imbibe the culture, and that one year gave me that time to know what I wanted to do. So I think the first year helps you in <coughs> finding what you want to do. And by the time you do, you have, and the career services and uh, the OISs, that's the Office of International I don't know the full form, but yeah, International, International Student <laughs> Services. So uh, they really help work. You can work with them really well to get an internship, and they help you out a lot. And James helps us out really well in that, yeah. And also one more thing um, for the international students that benefited me personally was, I think it's a great forum to even thank James for that, is the mentor, mentor program. I got a great mentor from WD40, and um, I've had a lot of conversations with him, and he's helped me understand what I want to do with my career ahead. And that's something that I, I, I think most of the international students have taken, uh, exploited that opportunity greatly. And uh, it's just meeting someone from the industry over here and knowing them and knowing their life. And he's in the supply chain, and I'm intending to concentrate in supply chain. And I'm surely his, his insights has influenced my decision. And just as a fun fact, the <laughs> first person in my entire class to get an internship this year was from Argentina. Exactly. So it's not, I don't think being I international agree. really not at all. your job search at all. 
as long as you're willing to work for it. Yeah, the, the program actually uh, incorporates an elective course. You can take a unit for your internship and then you do an additional report and then basically your work is classed as educational. Um, and so the university signs off on, on that opportunity for you. You can do 40 hours when you have no class, so during the summer break, and you can do 20 hours a week uh, in your second year, um, provided that there's a new focus each time the semester changes. So a new company or a new role within the same company. We have time for, yeah, we've got a few more. more. Maybe last question, unless there's some burning ones. Uh, this question is for Ike. Uh, what other creative opportunities are there for financing your MBA besides getting loans or uh, getting funds from your company? Well, there's always scholarships available uh, within and outside of the school, uh, de dependent on whether it's an academic scholarship or a scholarship for any ancillary reason. Um, it's, it's pretty much up to you to go out and seek out those sorts of scholarships and also discuss with the admissions team here um, your sp specific case and see whether they can get your scholarship to the school for work or anything of that nature. So there are many options out there, but it's more up to the prospective student or the student to go seek those things out, those options out. Yeah. Getting a great GMAT score really sets you up. That helps. <laughs> Time for one more. Anyone's got one? If not, we'll just remind you of the classes. So Dr. Kroom is offering a class called What Role Does Personality and Personality Disorder Play in Executive, Su in executive Success? And that'll be up in 220 upstairs. And uh, we've also got Priya taking a course in new, or offering a course in new product development in 222. And they're both next door to each other. so. We, we can probably all make our way up as a group. Before we do, I'd like to just take this opportunity to introduce the rest of the staff in the room in case you've got any further questions. So Dr. Luigi, as I said, um, head of academic. Casey is also here. Dr. Hayes is the, um, what's your formal title now? Assistant Dean of the school. Maria is here from academic planning. Amy is here from um, admissions. And James is here, uh, uh, as is Catherine at, at the back, and, and James is also here from Career Services. So I'd encourage you to reach out to any of them and um, make yourself known as well as, as field any questions that you might have. Or uh, you could ask us. Yeah, yeah we're, we're all us. here we'll be around. To, to help. And then um, after class, I believe there's lunch. Is that out the back here? So lunch is offered out the back here in, in the sunshine and enjoy Saturday. Yeah. And before we break, um, I know we didn't get to touch on this much, but if anybody has any questions on dual degrees and things of that nature, if taking on a second degree, um, reach out to them and they'll give you my contact information. I'm not going to be able to go to the classes with you, but uh, just let me know and I'll answer them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That goes for all of us. If you want to ask us anything, I'm sure we're all available on email um, through the school. So. Yeah. Let's go to class. <laughs> I just want to say a special thank you to our panelists. I think you guys did a fabulous job, so thank you very much.